Okay, we have something interesting today. I wanna to go over the reflection formula for the die logarithm that we have up here on the top of the board. And then maybe at the end of the video, we'll look at an example and a couple of associated results. And what we're gonna need for this is we have our definitions. I've got three different definitions for the die logarithm over here to the right. First, we have our series definition up top. And then we have two different integral definitions down at the bottom. These are pretty similar. You can just kind of go between these with a substitution, something like if you do like u equal to one minus t, you can kind of just go between these. Now for a starting point for deriving this formula, I want to use this definition right here. And basically what I want to do is take this and let's try to integrate it using integration by parts. I'll do the di method on it. As you'd expect, I want to differentiate the natural log. So we'll differentiate natural log one minus t, integrate one over t. And what I'm going to do, actually, let's bring the minus sign inside just so we can keep track of it. So I don't have to worry about forgetting that. So then first, when we differentiate this piece here, we get minus one over one minus t. But then chain rule, a minus sign pops out. That becomes a plus. Integrating this, we're just going to have natural log of t. So then what's gonna happen is we're gonna have an integral here at the bottom. So, right, so we'll write this minus integral from zero to x, and we'll just have natural log of t over one minus t. And then let's capture this part we have here on the diagonal. So this is gonna be minus ln t ln one minus t. And we need to evaluate this from zero to x on just evaluating this part here. Now you notice when we plug in zero, we're gonna have natural log zero times natural log of one, where this part's going to zero. So this part's going to minus infinity. Technically, this is gonna be an indeterminate form, but if you work out this with L'Hopital's rule or however you wanna work on this limit, this whole thing's going to zero, so I'm not gonna worry about this piece. And all we need to do is just plug an X in here. Then for this thing here, you'll notice this is really similar to our second formula or our second integral formula over here. So with just a little manipulation, we can use this. What I can do with it is we can kind of create something like if I take this integral that we have here, and then if I add a second integral from it, starting at x, if I have, we have this going from zero to x, if this is going from x to one. So adding these two integrals together, we're gonna end up going from zero to one for the whole thing. So we're gonna have the same thing from zero to one. But then let's just rearrange it, bringing this to the right side of the equation, subtracting on both sides. But then let's just use this minus sign here to flip the bounds around. So then we can write this as going from one to X. But then what we have right here, this is exactly this formula now. So this thing, I can write this as the logarithm of one minus X. And then on this one here, I can do the same kind of thing, flip the sign, I mean, sorry, flip the bounds. So now we're going from one to zero and bring a minus up front. And now this isn't exactly the same form as this, lower bounds one, but our X value on this is zero. So looking at the left side of the equation, when X is zero, this thing becomes just Li2 of one, and we get this minus sign out front. So what we can do is take this stuff and plug it back in right here. So we have the minus sign that we can't forget in front. This here is gonna be minus Li2 of one, and this here is just gonna be plus Li2 one minus X. And then we just need to bring down this other stuff, minus natural log X, natural log one minus X. But then let me just distribute back in this minus sign. So when I bring it in here, then we're gonna have a minus in front of this term. And then here minus times minus is plus. But now all this here, this is just our Li2 X value. So now we should be able to just take this equation and kind of rearrange it and simplify. What I can do is if I add this term, Li2, one minus X, added on both sides. So what we're gonna have on the left side, di logarithm of X plus di logarithm one minus X. Now for this value, di logarithm at one, this is where we can just use our definition right here. For di logarithm of one, what's gonna happen? We can just plug one in for X and we end up with the sum from one to infinity of one to the N, which is always just one over N squared. But this here is the Basel problem, or Riemann zeta function at two, and this value we know to be pi squared over six. So we'll plug that back in here, and so what we're gonna have here is pi squared over six minus this stuff, natural log x, natural log one minus x, and that's it. Now for a really easy example on how to use this formula, something I actually already did in a previous video, I'm just gonna do it again because it's a good example, 
is what happens when x is one half. Well then, using it on one half, what we're gonna have is we have that logarithm, one half, but then the one minus x value, that's also one half, so we're gonna end up with that logarithm one half again. And then we're gonna have pi squared over six minus natural log one half, but then this again, this is also natural log one half. So simplifying all this, we end up with two copies of that logarithm one half on the left side equal to pi squared over six. Now here I can flip these and bring a minus sign out front. So right for, so for natural log of one half, I can write that as minus natural log of two, same thing for this one. But then minus times minus is plus here, divide off two on both sides. And what we've got is our value for dial logarithm at one half. That's just gonna be dividing in the two, pi squared over 12 minus putting these together Natural log of two, all squared over two, and that's it. So now let me clean up the board. I'm just gonna look at one more thing before we finish this up. So now we have on the board this L function that I've seen defined a few different ways and called some different things. Sometimes you'll see this as the Rogers L function. And so I think the interesting thing about this function is we kind of complicate the definition a little bit by adding some stuff onto our dial logarithm. But then the results and identities with this tend to be cleaner and simpler. So for example, we'll do the same kind of thing looking at a reflection formula for this. So what I want to find is L of X plus L of one minus X. And so all I'm going to do is just plug in. So for L of X, we're going to just take all of this in our definition and we're going to just copy that all down. And then for the next part, same thing with this one, just plugging one minus X into this stuff. So we're going to have that logarithm one minus X plus half, but notice when I plug one minus X into this, it just revert. It's just good. It's just going to get back the same thing because this becomes an X over here. So I'm just going to write this as ln X ln one minus X, but then putting this together, just adding, we have here a logarithm X plus that logarithm one minus X. And when you put two copies of this together with the one half in front you get one copy. So we just have natural log X natural log one minus X. But now for this, we can use the reflection formula we just found. I can plug in all this stuff. So this becomes pi squared over six minus ln x ln one minus x plus the same thing. But then this is just gonna cancel with this. And so we have our identity at the L function of x plus the L function one minus x is just pi squared over six. So that kind of cleans up the reflection formula a bit. It's just kind of a trade-off as we added this stuff and then it subtracts off when we do the reflection formula. Then similarly, we could look, we can go back. I kept this on the board, our dial logarithm at one half. So if we want to find just the L function at one half, we can plug in for the first part, dial logarithm at one half is going to be this stuff. So we have pi squared over 12 minus ln two all squared over two. And then for this other stuff, we have one half ln one half. And then this is also ln one half. But doing the same thing we did before, flipping these and bringing out the minus sign, the minus signs cancel. And what's gonna happen is this piece is gonna cancel with this piece. And so our value for the L function at one half is just gonna be pi squared over 12. Now, one thing you don't see very often is there is this alternative definition of this L function it's almost silly because we're just trying to get a simpler expression, but I still kind of like it. So if we just multiply by six over pi squared on the exact same thing here, by doing this, the identities become even simpler. You can kind of do, you can work it out, but it's basically the same thing I just did using this definition. Now our reflection formula this year, because what happens is you end up with six pi squared times pi squared over six everything cancels and you're just left with one. Now for something like the reflection formula, I don't find it that helpful because both these values are pretty easy to remember. But where I think it's kind of nice is when you look at the particular values like this. So if we look at this L function of one half and do the same thing, we're gonna have six pi squared. Now this is gonna be all this stuff. And then this part's gonna work the exact same way that we just saw. This is gonna be just plus ln two squared over two this stuff cancels out, but then the pi squareds cancel out. Six over 12 is just one half. And so for our L one half, this value is just one half. So for the particular values, it's pretty nice because then you don't have to worry about, you're not really dealing with different fractions and reducing fractions on pi squared over 12. 
It's not a huge deal having pi squared here, but I actually find that these values are easier to remember without the pi squared and with the simpler fraction. Okay, so there you have it. That's it for today. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.